Hello, welcome back to PL SQL tutorial. In this PL SQL tutorial, we are going to discuss about PL SQL composite data type. And here is an overall view of PL SQL data type. We have some value which is scalar, which is primitive data type like number, date, hatcher, and all those things. And then we have another category of data where we combine this primitive data type together and we call them as PL SQL composite data type. They are of two types. One is PL SQL records, another one is PL SQL collections. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about PL SQL records. So let's uh, see how things works. We have, we, let's say we declare a primitive variable called x as number. And inside the begin, we assign a value x is equal to 5. Right? So that means at this time, x is a number. So x is a box where you can put some some value which is a number and indeed we put some value at this point and become five. So this is fine and you know and we, we can define more number of you know as, as many number of data type as as we did x, y, a, b, c, whatever. Okay, there is no restriction on that. However, it is a good idea if you know there are some data there, they are kind of similar, and instead of having different you know, five different variables, can we put one, declare them on one variable, okay? The, the way that you do in C, something called structure, or C++ class, or Java, those are the class where you have member variables, okay? Exactly same concept is here, and that is we call PLSQL records. So PLSQL record is a composite data type which contains multiple of scalar data type like number, hatcher, date, and so on. Let's see an example. I do I I declare and first time because the way that you define a class or you define a structure has a definition of your abstract data type. And that is done by saying type ABC. The ABC is the name of my abstract data type. And then I say ABC is a record of it's a record of inside this I'll tell what are the elements of that abstract data type. Let's say the element the first name is A and A is a number. And second element is B, which is the date. If I do that, so here basically what in this in this statement, what I said. I said that ABC is an abstract data type, which is a combination of a number and a date. Then I define X is a variable of that abstract data type ABC. So at this time, what I'm basically saying is the same analogy like this. I have a box, and that box name is X. However, that box can contain two stuff at a time. And those are A and B. And basically, you can think about that. That box has two compartments right now. And each of them, one of them will contain a number, another one contain a date. Like the example is okay, so like this, right? And at this time, since I do not assign anything, the values will be null. Then I do my begin, and inside that begin, I can define x dot a is equal to 5. So if I do that, then this null is gone, and essentially I create, I, I put 5 here. Similarly, I can do x dot b equal to 19 January 1901. In that case, this value is gone. And it is 19 Jan 01. Okay. And, and so this is essentially by doing this, what I'm doing, I'm packing the data together. Okay. So you can think about something like this. Like you want to basically let's say, say for example, you are going to to travel. Okay. So you are going to go to a new place. Are you going to take all your you know clothes, all your you know, let's say you're taking a bike and all this thing separately, or 
if you want to put them in one bag and transport them which one will be better so think about same way so that is the reason why they have this record type or how they have composite data type so they can combine similar kind of data together and they can uh, use that and we'll find out what is the benefits in our couple of examples in these videos okay so don't worry about that so this is why we and this is the basic things about composite data type, about the records type that we first define what my record is going to look like then i declare a variable of that type if you give if you consider your c++ or java example this is something declaration of a class and this is an object or if you do a c analogy this is the structure name and this is a structure variable okay. now after going to the like uh, going through this uh, basics so this is basically what i you know whatever i showed this is an example so abc is a record of abc and then direct and then I, I assign so this is what i already explained to you in the previous slide let's now see some more example which is more realistic so here i'm, I'm basically in this line number three i'm defining a new abstract type and what is the name the name of the type is rec1 underscore t and what is going to contain is going to contain three fields one is nurture one is number another is date and whenever at line number six i define rec1 so that time basically i have something called this is rec1 and rec1 is this is f1 field one field two and field three and then this is how it is at line number six and then what is the value by default all things are null because i don't assign anything then i declare another variable and another abstract type which is rec2 underscore t and then here i did something here i said that the the i the whatever the field is not null and i assign them a default value that is minus one and then there's another thing called virtual and triple f so therefore at line number eight whenever i define rec2 so rec2 is going to look like something like this this is my rec2 rec2 will have two fields one is id and second one is name and since i don't assign anything but this, since this has a default value therefore this become minus one this become a, a. then at line number seven i did something like this i also defined another variable called rec11 which is of same type of rec1 underscore t that means my rec11 is something like this this is rec11 the three field f1 f2 f3 all are now and then at line number nine i define another variable called rec3 and rec3 is what type rec3 is whatever employee table in database you now we have a database we have an employee table in database whatever that row and my rec3 will contain something similar let's say my employee table is employee name employee number salary job hire date and all those things so that means my rec3 is going to you know the first thing is whatever employee name is it's a varchar so this can contain a varchar and what is the name of this field name of the field is e name whatever the database field name so look the difference between number nine and number six in number six i'm saying that this, this type but here by default my record is of employee percentage root type okay so this is a reference type whatever we, we discussed in some of some of previous videos then also we de we we define another type called rec4 underscore t rec4 underscore t will not contain the complete employee row but instead it will contain two columns from the employee table those are e name and salary okay and then rec4 basically here i i define another variable rec4 and rec4 has two uh, fields which is one is e name another one is salary so this is how it is at line number 12 all this all these variables are created and and kept here except rec2 which was initialized all others contains right now null then in line number 14 i start to initialize rec1 dot field one so rec1 dot field one instead of null i put it yesterday then i put 65 and i put what about today's date minus that so some date some dates then after line number 16 rec1 is completely initialized then what i'm doing in line number 17 i am assigning rec11 
I am assigning rec one to rec one one. So that means all these things whatever they are, this is y, this is sixty five, this is whatever the date, all these things assigned. Okay. So at line number seventeen, rec one one also initialized, and in eighteen, I am basically reading rec two dot name. So that rec two dot name is triple F. So this is this is going to print my triple F. So this is how I am going to initialize. I am going to declare a type, abstract type. Of abstract record type, and then I'm going to declare a variable here. I'm going to access those variables here. Different ways of you know, declaring and different ways of accessing them. So this is what this example illustrates how we are going to declare and define. Next time, next thing that we're going to do, we're going to see like how this is going to be used in more effective way. So here is an example. I'm going to rec I'm going to selecting a complete record to a record variable. So here, what I'm doing, I'm, I, I define a type, which is record type, and that record type of is basically this, you no know, rec one is of that record type. So this rec one is going to have two compartments. One is name, and second one is employee number. Okay, and then what I'm doing, I'm selecting employee e name and employee number into rec one. See. Here, here, this is the you know basically if I do not do this rec one, I could have done in another way like you no know, x and y two variable, and I could have done x comma y. So imagine like these are the two these are two variables, but when we are going to select a lot of things, it's going to be unnecessarily going to make this thing complicated, right? So instead of that, we can create a record record type and then just basically fetch the complete thing into the into that uh, record. Okay, so this is what we are doing here. We are we are fetching the uh, you know e name and employee number into this record one and let's say it's king and say one two three four so this is you know this line does all this thing for you and then I'm going to print this thing. so this is the use of record it makes your code more compact similarly we can we can use an insert PL SQL record so basically what I'm what I've done here I I have created a uh, record called department underscore info and what is that? That is exactly the same as what about my department stable in my database. My department stable in my database consists of department underscore ID and another column is department underscore name and the last column was department location underscore ID. Last column is location underscore ID. Okay, so if these are the three columns that is in my department stable in my database, then I can I can initialize my record department underscore info using 300. So basically, this is my department underscore info looks like. Okay, so three things. And then I put 300. This is personal and 1700. So here, insert, insert into department values. I just keep the complete name of the record. So at a one, you know, it's going to insert. So you can do the same thing in different way. Like you know, you could have like let's say you have, you have defined instead of instead of defining record, you, you have defined x, y, and so z, right? And then you could have re, you could have rewritten this uh, insert statement like this: insert into table values x comma y comma z. Okay, this is same thing we have done. But again, look at this. Like you now, this is only only three columns, only three uh, like you no know, three variables, three columns you have. So whenever we have multiple variables in those thing, it's going to be more complicated to, to do this kind of thing. So that is why we use record to make the code more compact. Same thing, we can also do an update. And here is again, you know, we created a, a record called department notice for info, and then we assign this value. And then using set row, this syntax, we are going to update the complete row where department ID is 300 with these values. Say for example, if you do not give anything, like you no, know, say let's say we, we, we just need to modify this code. Uh, we create a department underscore info. So this is my uh, record. And then uh, I have ID, name, and location. So for whatever reason, let's say I forgot to put this thing. Okay, so I, I don't I don't have anything. So in that case, what I have, if I don't have this, if I miss this line of code. Then my uh, department info variable is going to look like this, 300, and then name is null because since I didn't assign anything, so it's not going to have anything. Then I have 1700. So whenever I'm going to do this update statement, 
what is going to happen in for department 300 the name is set to null because i'm just going to set everything you know i'm going to set exactly what i'm seeing here in my department underscore info variable i'm going to set to that row in my database so therefore be careful whenever you are going to do this update with record make sure that you know, basically you are setting you are not setting only one one column here you are setting the entire row okay so if you for whatever reason if something got gone missing or something gone wrong in this manipulating this variable then you are going to wrongly update something okay, so be, be careful about uh, update so this is what a plc equal record and if you go to this so this is what we discussed right now okay and then as you see as you appreciate that using record our code become more compact and it's more flexible and less and it's, 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 it's less error prone in next videos we are going to discuss about associative array of PLSQL collections thank you